this will be good stories for you guys. So the next question is, so you've never been at least close to being kissed? Welcome back to my channel and to part two of Saved, Single, and Left Behind. You guys, first of all, wow, 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 wow. Can I say wow again? Last video, I will just be honest with you guys and say I was so nervous before I put that video out. I had so many emotions. I told you guys some of them in the video, like, I just don't feel like this is y'all's business, like, this is gonna be weird, and I just had all kinds of visions in my head about how it could maybe go wrong, even though I felt and knew that it was right and that it was for someone, the word was for someone, but I cannot tell you how many text messages, like, and DMs and personal messages that I got about that video. Like, I could have cried like somebody wants to use it in their singles ministry at their church other people older than me were saying like you know I felt that way or I'm going through that too like thank you for speaking out on that I can't believe like you're going through the same thing I am and I just I was blown away you guys are so awesome I'm so grateful one for the support for just watching because sometimes these videos can go long and so for those of you who, who watch and like you'll mention something from like later on in the video and I'm like oh you really watched it like for real it is just so special to me to have people that are supporting this vision of mine and then on the other hand I am just so grateful that my story is being used to touch someone else's life so I know that I'm doing the right thing uh, by doing this series for you guys and with you guys because you all are a part of it and that's what today is all about so you all sent in your questions to me based on the last video things that you were thinking that were going through your head while you were watching the video so I'm just gonna go through and answer all of them and I think I might throw in some extra information as well just based on some stuff that I was like I would probably want to mention this but nobody asked the question so without further ado let's get right into it so I'm using my phone here to keep me on track with the questions I think the first one I'm going to answer is the one that was from YouTube somebody asked how old were you when you got saved so um the true answer to that is I actually don't know um I know I always tell people six years old because I remember I was very very young I could have been younger than six um, but I knew exactly what I was doing and it was during my like bedtime prayer time I'm pretty sure it was I just remember it was in my room um, and I think I was praying with my mom and I told her you know I want I want to accept Jesus in my heart and so she prayed the prayer of salvation with me and my dad usually writes all of our like spiritual birthday stuff like the day we were baptized and like all that stuff in his bible he has this really old bible that he carries everywhere um but he couldn't find it in there so i don't know um the one that i do remember for sure is i was rededicated when i was eight years old so that's why i say it had to be sometime before that um and i don't i don't know if i would call it rededicated it was my first time publicly doing it uh, in front of my church family and I remember I used to have this little diary that um, I used to write in. And I remember distinctly having a page where I drew uh, Sister Tone. She had this curly hair. I remember drawing it and drawing me coming down to the altar and talking about that experience and what it was like for me. Um, so yeah, that is my story of when I was saved. And when I tell people, like a lot of times they hear like, oh, you were saved that young. You know, you didn't really know what you were doing. When I tell you I knew, I knew. I've always had a heart for worship. My mom used to talk about um, coming by my room and opening the door and I was supposed to be sleep, everybody was supposed to be sleep. But I used to have these like gospel kids CDs and worship CDs and I had this like red stereo. It used to be a purple one, purple and gray one. But then I had this red stereo boombox thing on my toy box and I used to play that CD on repeat. And I would be in my bed, y'all. I, I remember those nights, like, feeling like I could just touch the sky. Like, I would be in there singing and humming. She said she used to peek in and see me, like, you know, I was supposed to be asleep. Who knows what time it actually was. But I used to sing to Jesus every night, every night, and just feel his presence, like, wrapping me up before I went to bed. Like, I, y'all, I was super saved when I was little. Not that I had declined, but, like, my relationship with God was so real to me at such a young age so yeah that is a long-winded answer for when I got saved do you feel like you are awkward around guys Woo, Chile. okay um do I feel like I'm awkward around guys not necessarily um 
I'm thinking really hard because I'm like, my friends might disagree with me. Personally, I don't think that I'm awkward around guys. I had guy friends um, in undergrad, really, is when I started really having guy friends. I had guy friends in high school, too. Um, but not really as much as, like, you know, Greek life and all that other stuff brought in undergrad. So, yeah, I knew guys, like... Yeah. Now I think we all have a certain degree of like awkwardness. Well, that's not true. Some people really are just super comfortable around anybody. But I have like a, to me, a natural, normal amount of awkwardness around a guy. Let's say a guy that I have a crush on or a guy that's like super fine. Like, you know, I have a very normal level of awkwardness, but not anything that's like overt. Not, and I don't think it has anything to do, well, it might have a little bit to do with my relationship past. But I don't think it's like I've gone this long without a guy and so when a guy comes around like I'm just like ooh, like no it's, it's not like that like most times I'm pretty chill around guys um sometimes I overthink a lot to myself by myself like when I'm at home or sometimes after an interaction with a guy like I'll be thinking super super hard about like everything I said or everything that I did um sometimes like, so I, I guess that's where the awkwardness comes out. And this is not really having to do with like awkwardness, but I noticed one characteristic of the fact that I've just gone this long without is I have an automatic wall to guys that come up to me. So it's not really an awkwardness, but sometimes, like I'm, I'm friendly, but like sometimes I'll assume that guys are on games or guys are on mess when they're not. Like, when they're just literally saying hi or they're just literally giving me a compliment. Like I used to be very cut and dry with like if a guy would say something to me while I was out or like cat call not really cat call but like you know just compliment me or say something to me I would be very stale and very like cut off and I think that stems from like this narrative that we get around guys like being on the prowl most of them being disrespectful you know and you know just what society says about men what you know I've heard about like you know you can't trust guys like guys are always on mess even some guys will tell you that like nah don't be out here trusting these dudes so hearing all those messages remember I told y'all I'm a rule follower I stick to the book pretty much um for the most part in some areas and so because of that it was just like oh, okay well when I'm out like this is what they say guys are usually on so I just won't entertain it so instead of an awkward a lot of times they it might come off as a little like standoffish or to some people like a little harsh um and it was really bad at one point not bad but it was just very explicit whereas now like you know I've relaxed a little bit like I can say thank you when I get a random compliment while I'm out or you know I don't have to be like super cut and dry with guys um but yeah I hope that really answered the question so not really awkward Kind of sometimes a little standoffish and a little cut um, but we're working on that I'm trying not to be as much <laughs> okay so then the next one is uh, the question is Greek life didn't help you in regards to getting guys <sighs> I you know I can tell that somebody non-greek is who is asked this question <laughs> because anybody Greek who's watching this is like I mean, woo chile, honey, woo chile. That, okay, let me not play my Greek brother. I love y'all to bits and pieces. But they know the mess that they be on. 90% of them be on some mess sometimes. Now, it's about 10% of the good ones. You know, you got the cream of the crop of every ore. But my point is, no, Greek life did not help me in regards to guys. Now, it may have as far as like, you know the platform that it gave me and the way guys look at me like while she's put together like I've heard stuff like that of just you know guys admiring me and you know giving me props for the things I was able to accomplish through my sorority and the platform that it gave me um, so in that regard yes I guess but it didn't like have dudes diving in my DMs like no and the theory of my friends and even some people and actually a Greek man y'all I ran into in Chicago this Q saw me in Chicago this was last year and I was walking through my hotel he saw my lanyard and stopped me and ended up taking me to the bar and let me get a drink whatever bought me a drink and you know we just talked and he had to finesse real hard, y'all, because I told you, I don't be on that. Especially, I'm in Chicago, I'm by myself, I'm in my hotel, I'm like, 
who is this Negro? But I went ahead and entertained him because it, it just, it was fine. And we ended up talking for some hours and one of the things he said, just by after a conversation and hearing about what I've done and who I am, he was like, oh yeah, you you intimidate um, guys. I know, I, I know it. And I'm like, people say that as a compliment and I'm just like, I don't really know how I feel about that. Because if y'all are so intimidated to the point where you don't speak, that's on you. Like, I can't dim my light so that y'all feel comfortable approaching me. Like, that's not on me. That's on y'all. I don't know. I don't understand the intimidation thing. Um, what was the original question? Well, I have lost my place. Oh, Greek guys. Yeah, so I think from that stance, like, it, it amplified who I was in my platform, but it didn't have dudes knocking down my door. And the other thing is, I wasn't necessarily looking for Greek guys. Like, especially in undergrad, I mentioned this, I think in the last video. I knew at IU, like my undergrad, that dating was not really a thing. Like a lot of us were Greek. A lot of the black community was Greek. Not all, but a good portion of it was. Um, and the black community was small. And everybody was sleeping with everybody. And if they weren't sleeping around, they were a good guy. And most of them were wiped up. You know what I'm saying? Like they had a girl that they were dating all four years and they ended up getting married or just like a serious relationship. So it was either or. Like I didn't really ever find a guy that was in between that. Now I think around this age, Greek life might help me as far as like the networking events and things that like Columbus does. Because they have a nice, uh, thriving, pretty much Greek system. Um, as far as graduate chapters. So it might help me at this age, but personally in undergrad it didn't help me. Now somebody else's story might be different because they have different standards. Like, I wasn't accepting certain things, so it didn't help me because the type of guys that were approaching me based on the fact that I was Greek, I'm not interested in you because that's not what I'm doing. But for some people, like, you know, to each his own, but that was not my story. All right, this next question is quite hilarious to me. Uh, <laughs> This will be good stories for you guys. So the next question is, so you've never been at least close to being kissed? Um, so let's put it like this. Yes, I've been close. It's almost happened. Let me count. One, two, three. Wait, 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 wait. One, one, okay, three or four times. I don't know why my memories are blurring together. Three times that are very vivid in my mind of like, yeah, that almost definitely happened. And the reason it didn't happen is mainly just because I'm a chicken. Now the first two times that it almost happened and didn't, I'm just, we'll put it like this, I'm just glad it didn't happen, okay? We'll just leave it there. Um, I'm very glad those didn't happen, but they definitely almost happened. The first time I was 17 or 18 when I almost got my first kiss. And it was just an awkward, that time was super awkward, super awkward setup. And I hate that idea of knowing it's coming, you know? Like, you're doing the whole, like you're just, ugh. He just tried too hard. I, just, I know, I hate to do this to you guys, because you'll be like, tell us the story. I'm trying not to be petty, make pet, pet, petty on here. So I'm trying not to tell this. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell the story. Okay, so twice when I was 18. Oh, three times. Oh, wow, you guys. Wow, this is a moment because it's making me remember all the times where it really almost happened. Then the fourth time was when I was 23. 23, I almost did. And then the most recent one was like <laughs> a few months ago. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, of uh, it almost happened. So yeah, and every time, it would have happened if it weren't for me. I think I was, out, well, no. The first time was just awkward, so that wasn't happening. But yeah, again, it was because of me. So yes, all of these times I didn't get kissed, on, it, it was my fault, okay? Many of the times I was just, I'm, I'm a big awkward sauce. Whoever asked the awkward question before, now this is where I am awkward. When it comes down to like, oh, the moment's about to happen, I am awkward sauce. You hear me? Awkward, 100%, 1000% awkward. I just, I just, it just, oof. Like it doesn't flow naturally for me and I get in my head thinking like they probably have expectations because of how old we are at this age. Like I should be an amazing kisser by now and they all are because they've had, you know, plenty of practice. And so I just get in my head and then it's just like the moment's happening. I see the signs because I peep everything. So I, I peep all the like two plus two and now it's about to equal four and I'm just like, minus one. Like just, 
let's throw it off, throw Rich in here, and oops, moment is over. So that obviously is probably confusing because I mean, because you're like, we thought you wanted to get kids. I do, but I, yeah, I don't know y'all. I don't know. It's all my fault. It is. It is. I have a wall up. No one has really broken down yet. I, I just don't know. Like somebody is just gonna have to be really the right one and be really patient with me for it to happen. And that sucks. That really sucks because these moments should be spontaneous. And who knows? Maybe it will happen spontaneously and like all this awkward sauce that's happened up until now will all disappear in that moment when it's actually supposed to happen. I feel like I would feel, I've never felt super safe and secure in the people that I was, it almost happened with. Like I want it to happen with somebody who's worth it, especially at this age. I didn't wait all this time for like, to just give it away to some whack person. Like no, like I want it to be, it doesn't have to be like husband, but you know, just somebody who's really worth that moment. Um, and I don't think I've been with, in that moment with anyone where I just felt super safe and secure and just like, yeah, I want to do this, let's do it. So. Maybe that'll change. Okay, next question. Uh, how do you properly cope with rejection in dating? Because it's something else. Child, something else. It is something else. I ain't even gonna hold you. It is truly something else. And I've really only experienced rejection once. I mean, other than like probably middle school at some point, I got my little Phyllis hurt by a crush. It happens to everybody, but like at an adult age where like I could I could really understand what was happening. Yeah, I had one instance of rejection, but it was enough to like rock my world. You know what I'm saying? Like it was substantial, and I felt really you know humiliated, embarrassed. I talked about that a little bit in the first one. Um, so how did I cope with rejection? I'm gonna be honest with y'all because I've been transparent. I did not deal with rejection in a positive way. I very much internalized it. Um, I have voices in my head telling me like, you know, it's your, it's your fault. Like, you weren't pretty enough. You weren't this enough. You weren't that enough. Um, thinking of all the ways I should have done things differently or could have done things differently to not end up in that situation. Feeling like this kind of stuff doesn't happen to to people like me. Like, um, not like I'm too good for it because I don't want to sound like. It, it wasn't that I thought I was too good for it, but I, I just thought I had worked so hard and had such a good character, tried to be a good person, where I'm like, stuff like this shouldn't happen to me. Like, it just shouldn't happen to people like me. And then I'm thinking like, okay, so he, he didn't love me enough, he didn't care about me enough. Like, it just was like, yeah, rejection. I mean, it took me more than a year to really come to terms with like the fact that he even happened. Because when it happened, my coping mechanism was literally throw it behind me and keep pushing. Especially because 2017 really rocked my world. Like from start to finish, that year was challenging. I mean, I've talked about it multiple times on here. So I had no emotional capacity or space to hold onto that rejection. Because if I did, it would've took me out of here. I mean, literally all that stuff compounded, I would've just been like, forget all this, forget all y'all, deuces. So I had to just kind of throw it behind me. First thing I want to share is what helped me literally have to fight those voices in my head. I mean, they were loud voices, y'all. I'm talking about at multiple points of the day. Like, I'd be getting dressed and the voices would come and remind me of the embarrassment, remind me of what happened. Like, have me compare myself to, um, you know, whoever else. Like, it just, it was so loud because of that rejection. It stemmed from that rejection. So what I had to do for myself and this sounds so basic, but I'm telling you it's the truth, is I had to fight those negative thoughts with the truth. So when it would say like, you're not good enough, you're not worthy enough, you shouldn't still be in school, you shouldn't be doing all these things. The reality is I know good and well that what I'm doing right now in this season of my life is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. I know that I listen to the voice of God. I know that I'm where I am because of God. I know that I'm successful and that I'm living and that people love me and that I love others. Like. I know I'm beautiful, that's the one. Come on, y'all this might sound basic, but there are so many times where people will tell me I'm beautiful and I'd be like, you're yeah, right. And I know deep down in my heart that I'm beautiful, but sometimes we put our beauty in the hands of like society. 
Like we allow, whether or not guys are responding to us or, or commenting and liking our pictures or shooting a shot in our DMs, we let that be the meter for our beauty and for our worth. And like, what the heck is that? Like why? Because of this age we're in, that's what we do. But I had to literally separate the two, literally hype myself up. I mean hype myself up like, girl you are point, okay? Period point blank. Like while getting dressed, while doing my hair, while throwing on a little bit of makeup, like just reminding myself that I'm dope and allowing myself to soak in those moments of achievement, of greatness, of the things that were happening in my life that were good. It was like, no, these are awesome moments and you're a cool, you're a dope person and you deserve love. You deserve someone who's going to do this thing right. So that those voices would overpower those feelings that I had from rejection. Did those voices ever completely go away? I think now they have really subsided, I mean substantially, because at one point they were just loud and in charge, child. Um, but I think they've dimmed enough to where I don't notice it anymore. Like now I've gained my confidence back, I've gained my, you know, just my judge back. And the other part of that is like a asterisk, uh, part B, is treat yourself a little bit. like. When I was feeling down and in the dumps, like, I kind of just came into myself and, you know, I wasn't doing things like get my nails done every once in a while, you know, get my eyebrows done, because getting your eyebrows done will change your whole life. I'm telling you, it change your whole face. Does anybody else feel that way? Like, getting your eyebrows done just change your whole face. I'll be like, wow, I just feel so ugly. Go get my eyebrows done. I'm Queen Elizabeth. I'm Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> like, just winning. But anyways. Uh, treating myself definitely helped like you know just doing a little extra doing it up like getting dressed just cuz and being like yeah girl you pop it forget what they said you are popping <laughs> and part uh well part two of the of the response that i want to give is that today in counseling y'all my counselor did not actually bring up ariana grande's thank you next <laughs> But um, her message was literally, I thought in my head like, wow, Ariana Grande is a philosopher. Like she is a counselor and I need to give her the check today for my counseling session because she is the reason I had a breakthrough. My counselor basically said that I need to go back to, um, you know, whatever broken relationship, specifically the one that I'm speaking of, that I need to go back and basically open it up and start to reframe that situation in a positive light. Um, not necessarily that the situation was positive, but looking for ways to be grateful. What can I be thankful for that I've learned out of this situation? What did this situation teach me? What did I learn from this experience? Like, what did I gather from this experience? How did this make me stronger, better? How did this prepare me for my future? And I never, y'all, never did that with this situation. I told her, literally, it's so simple. I was on the couch in her office just like, like, wow, why did I think of that? Like, that makes so much sense. Like, when I, when I harbor on that rejection and those feelings of it, I carry the weight of it. I like, I stack weights on my chest and talking about how negative that was and how this, how that, how it made me feel, how wrong it was. Oh, it was so wrong. Did me wrong. Did me dirty. Blah, blah, blah. And you stay so stuck on that, on those feelings that you miss what you learned out of the situation. Now I see it. There's so much I learned, so much I gained, so much I was saved from. Like, my God, today, like, I would not be here doing what I'm doing without the way that um, this situation unfolded. And so I say that to encourage you to begin to reframe the rejection. Like, instead of saying, oh, woe is me, carrying that rejection, carrying those feelings from it, one, remind yourself you pop it. Two, go get your eyebrows done. <laughs> I can't explain it. Just go get your eyebrows done. It changed your life. And three, reframe those situations. Think about what you picked up for next time and how that situation will now make you better. The next one is what books do you read about relationships? Um, so the truth is I don't really read books on relationships outside of the Bible. <laughs> I don't really read like a book that is tailored to relationships. I tried to think really hard about this because maybe I'm lying to y'all and maybe there is a book that I use, but I don't think there is. What I think it is is I watch a lot of videos surrounding um love and relationships and marriage the the true essence of marriage and some of y'all might be thinking movies i'm not talking about movies i'm talking about reality stuff so um for example michael todd's relationship series um i'll try to link it above 
but his relationship series was one that really just rocked my whole world um, about relationships and my misconceptions about relationships and all these horrible things I picked up about relationships. His um, series comes to mind as something that really challenged me. Um, another person is Sarah Jakes Roberts. I listen to her podcast and a lot of times she's on there talking about marriage, talking about relationships, talking about um, some different things that go into that. So that's another person that I really like take the word in as far as, um, you know, challenging me in the area of relationships. Um, another one, which is not really spiritually based, but it helps, um, is the Black Love documentary. Let me start off. My memory card was full, so I had to change it out. But anyways, what I was saying was uh, Black Love documentary is another one that I use. It's not necessarily spiritually based. But the reason I love that docuseries is because it shows me real marriage. Like, I am a person who, I'll admit it, like, I was in love, always have been with romantic comedies and, like, romance movies. Always would watch them growing up, especially when I was, like, going through those periods of just feeling, like, super lonely, super hopeless, you know, I don't have a bae, so I can watch a movie and have a, you know, a bae experience from these movies. And so I had this very fantasy mindset, kind of like what I was talking about in the last video about relationships like it was just all this fantasy this ooh la la and so I needed to start falling in love with real marriage like not like Prince Charming marriage not rich daddy buys the wedding or not you know fall head over heels in love and the next day they're married like no I needed real authentic stories of marriage and so Black Love docuseries does that for me like they talk about everything the good bad the ugly listening to what couples have endured, like the kind of situations that they stuck around through, their mindset, how they keep it fresh in the bedroom, like literally learning every aspect of a real marriage so that I can get out of the fantasy mindset and start grasping onto reality. This is the perfect time for me to ask you all if there are books or, you know, uh, other YouTube channels or something like that that you think I should check out or that we all should check out. Um, just put them in the comments for the good for the good of all of us uh, so we can all check those things out. So I look forward to you all's suggestions. And then I say this one for last because I really feel like it's just such a good sum up question is if you could go back, would you do things differently? And you know what you guys, I really sat with this. I actually asked my best friend about it on the phone just thinking like, okay, now we know the reality of my situation. If I could do it all again, would I do it differently? <sighs> you know what? I don't know. That's not a good answer, but I don't know. Here's why I say I don't know, because it's ambiguous. Like, now if I could have done things differently as far as like having a date to prom, I would have had a date to prom. Like if I could go back, I think I said that in the prom video where I was talking about my story, story time of like not having a date to prom. I think I would have had a date to prom and like, you know, allowed myself to just explore a little bit. Like, I don't think I would do it differently as far as like not being a virgin. Like, I'm very clear about my decision for that and I think it saved me from a lot of, lot more heartache. Like, I've had some heartache, but it could have been way worse if, you know, sex was involved and a lot of physical, uh, you know, physical parts of the relationship were involved then. It could have been much harder. So I am grateful for that and I think I will stick with that and just to like really you know allow myself to go to open up a little bit I would do that differently I really would and I hope that I get the chance with my own daughters to encourage that in them of like okay like it's okay some, some, some stuff is okay you know like allowing yourself to just be a teenager like when I look back I wasn't a teenager I was I had the maturity of a grown adult at that age and it saved me from a lot so I'm grateful for it but in some instances it hurt me or you know just kept me a little bit too sheltered a little too closed in and I honestly <laughs> this is funny but I low-key wish I had got my first kiss out of the way when I was little because I feel like when you're little you don't have to be good you know what I'm saying like everybody has these horrible like first kiss stories like you just had a horrible first kiss or like maybe it was good but like it was totally random like you know, you spun the play and spin the bottle and you had to kiss somebody or like, you know, just random stuff like that. I wish I had a rando first kiss. I honestly, truly, truly, not a random, like random person, but just like a random experience. Like, to just get it out the way. Cause now I feel like I've built up the pressure too much. I got all these visions in my head. I've seen too many movies. Like, it's just all, it's just a mess now. 
and and now I've, I would put I do put too much pressure on myself in that moment to where I can't even I can't even go through with it because I'm just thinking too hard like ugh. that for sure I would want to put that way back in the past just throw that back there because man I totally wish my first kiss was out the way I just I did so that's what I mean by I don't know because like I said some degrees yes maybe a little something different but in some aspects i am glad that it turned out exactly how it did and now we're just working really hard to make the future even better than what the past was and to grow and to challenge ourselves and yeah step outside my comfort zone so yeah i've talked you all's heads off enough i hope this video isn't super long i'm really trying to keep it under but i'm looking at like how long these clips are and i'm just like so sorry um, so yeah, I'll try to edit this down for you guys, but um, I hope this answered your questions. If you still have more questions, I'm happy to answer them in the comment section. Just throw your questions down there, or always, like, I always respond to my DMs. I mean, always. Like, literally always. Unless it's like a creep, which is very rare. So, um, you know, if you have questions, you can always hop in my DMs on my Instagram. Uh, I do have a Facebook page if you want to hop in the inbox over there. But yeah, I'm happy to answer your questions, so I'm sure more will come. Um, I'm not sure what my next video topic will be on this series. If you guys have ideas of what you want to see next in this series, drop them in the comments. I have a few ideas, but not 100% sure yet. And if you're not following me on Instagram, I will go ahead probably and do a poll on there to see like what you all want to see next as far as the next episode. So you'll miss a chance to vote on the next video if you're not following me. So go follow me on Instagram at Miss underscore DCH. And yeah, you guys, subscribe if you enjoyed this. You don't want to miss any part of this series, so make sure you turn on the notification bell. Like this if you really enjoyed our Q&A today. I really love doing this for you guys and just having girl chat. Like this series is so great for me, y'all, and it's helping me so much so thank you um yeah i think that's all i have to say and i'm gonna get off of here so i can go edit and put this up for you guys so i hope you enjoyed and as always i will see you guys in the next video bye